Alrighty, some of the most common questions I get for the 14 kilowatt hour Rhino battery from Big Battery is, one, can you run an air conditioning? Two, can you run a stove? And three, can you run a dryer? I'm not sure, we're gonna find that out today. Here we go, back feeding the panel right now. What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. All right, so in today's video, it's kind of like a twofer. We're gonna do a quick little follow-up on the 14 kilowatt hour Rhino battery that's from Big Battery. And then we are gonna to try to answer some of the most common questions that I get on the Rhino battery. First one is, can you run an air conditioning from the Rhino? Can you run a stove or can you run a dryer? In this video, we are going to attempt those and I'm gonna explain why I haven't been able to do that before. I think I found a workaround for that. I could at least power the air conditioning and the stove. I don't think I'll be able to do the dryer. However, if it can do the stove or the air conditioning, it should do a dryer, no problem. All right, so a quick little follow-up on the Rhino battery. I've been using it for the past couple of months. I think I've done a little over 100 cycles on it so far. Most days, I don't even use the full 276 amp hours. Usually at the end of the day, whenever I start using the battery, I can run all night, and in the morning time, I roughly have 20% state of charge left in the battery. And then a few hours later, the sun comes up, and recharges it and then we start the cycle all over again. So having said all that, I pretty much have zero problems or issues running with the 14 kilowatt hour Rhino battery. Here in just a sec, we'll go over there and take a look at the battery, I guess, if you wanna see it. I'll show you the little screen on the side and we'll go through the menu options real quick and in there it'll show you how many cycles I've actually done. I know it's over 100 but I'm not sure what it's at right now. And then after that I'll do my quick little explanation of why I can't normally run the air conditioning or the stove or the dryer and then I'll do my little workaround which nobody else should technically do. This is just for testing purposes or this video only. And then after the video, I'm gonna reset it back to normal. Oh, one last thing before we get started, I'm gonna show you the specs. This is the side panel that's on the battery. I don't have it on over there right now because I don't have it mounted to the wall yet. But if it'll focus on there, you can see all the specs of the battery pretty much. If you need to pause it, go ahead. If not, then let's get started. Alrighty, here is the battery. It's pretty much in the same spot as the last video. I did do one quick modification here, if you can see it. The little antenna right here, I pulled off the cover and pulled it out this little screw hole right here. That's just so I can get longer Bluetooth range because I'm pretty sure this is, I don't know, really thick steel. So it does block a lot of that Bluetooth signal. So I just pulled the cover off and shoved that right through one of the holes. So now the range, you know, goes out pretty far. And we'll do a quick little look-see on the battery. So we turn it on. I'm not running from the battery right now. I wanted the battery to be full charged for this test in the morning. So anyway, uh, we're sitting at 56.3 volt, 100% state of charge. If we go over to status, you can see I've done 106 cycles on this battery so far. I've been using it nonstop for the last couple of months. Again, zero issues. Uh, my average amp hour use is 254. Pretty much because I charge up to 56 volts and not 58. And in the morning time, I'm roughly 20% state of charge. And then shortly after that, the sun comes out and starts recharging the battery. Go to advanced. These are all the cells inside. As somebody else mentioned in a previous video, this is a little generic as it only shows 3.5 or 3.6. It doesn't show the other two digits, which would be nice, but it's not you know, necessary. Anyway, still have it connected to the 12,000 watt grow watt split phase low frequency inverter. If you want to see the model number and all the specs and stuff that is right here, go ahead and pause it if you need to. That is the inverter that I am using. And of course I have the solar connected right there for right now. I'll shut the solar off whenever we actually do the testing. Anyway, there's the Rhino battery. I haven't had any problems with it. It's been doing fan freaking tastic for everything that I have used it for. Here in just a little bit, we're gonna to attempt to run the air conditioning and the stove, which I've never done uh, obviously on the battery or on the inverter. All right, so just a quick explanation why I haven't been able to run the air conditioning or the stove or the dryer. This is a sub panel. It's technically like a critical loads panel. 
and it runs my entire house minus the air conditioning stove and dryer. My house was built in 1954. There's a couple of really old panels in the back, which I'll show you that are still original to the house. And those panels back there is what runs the air conditioning stove and dryers. All right, so in the back of my house, I have these two main panels and these are super old. They have the old style fuses in them. Uh, this is just what they did back in the day. Anyway, power comes in through these two 100 amp fuses. And then on the bottom side, it actually splits off in three different places. This way it goes over to my stove. This conduit right here goes over to my air conditioning. And then the third one actually powers that main panel back there on that top circuit breaker, all right? This one right here is what I get the 240 volts to the grow watt. So the only thing that I've been able to figure out how to do this today for a, a test is I'm gonna pull off the cover on the other side so I can back feed through that main circuit breaker panel and it's gonna come back and feed this panel right here, which will then allow me to turn on the stove and the air conditioning. The dryer is on this panel over here, so that's why I can't do the dryer at least today because I can't back feed this panel. And how I'm gonna do that is just pull all these fuses so nothing can be sent back to the grid. Again, nobody attempt this at home. This is just for video purposes. So we'll pull these here in just a minute. We're gonna go around to the stove and the air conditioning and see what kind of power they draw and uh, go from there. All right, if we head upstairs, we'll check out the stove slash range first. This is a GE, and I'm pretty sure the model number and stuff is right down here. And it says 11.6 kilowatt. So that's pretty huge. And then there's also a 15.4 kilowatt. So that's, that's more than the inverter. So I don't know. I guess we'll find out here shortly. <laughs> That's actually more than the battery as well. We'll take a look at this guy right here. You gonna help me with the video today? No, okay. And we also have another one right here. Hey, are you gonna help me today? No, you don't want to? All right. Right over here is our air conditioning. It's a champion. All right, so I don't really know anything about air conditioning. I don't know how much this actually draws. Compressor, 208 to 230 volts, which were covered, 60 hertz. I'm guessing it's 19.5 amps, maybe, or 130 on startup. I could be wrong. Uh, cooling fan, same thing, maybe 1.3 amps, quarter horsepower. I guess we will find out if this actually works. I don't have a soft start or anything like that. You know, nothing crazy. We're just going to... We're just gonna send it, all right? I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these real quick so I don't have to come back over here. So now I am completely isolated from the grid. Now we can go over to the other panel. I'm gonna pull the cover off real quick so I can flip that main breaker. I can't do it now because the generator lockout switch is installed. All right. Stove clock is off, there's no power here. All right, I'm a little nervous, but um, here we go. Back feeding the panel right now. I'll just get out of the way. All right, look at that, nothing happened. First time ever doing that. All right, so, oh, my solar's on. I gotta turn off the solar. So now we're drawing 14.32 amps, total of 775 watts. Oh, uh, let's see. What should we try to power first? I guess we could go upstairs and try the stove. How about that? Set this somewhere so it's in view. All right, so at this current moment, 14.24 amps. All right, we got power here. I'm just gonna turn on this burner here. We'll go low. All right, we're drawing 44 amps or 2,300 watts. I'll turn on this one up here. Same thing, 40 amps, 75 amps. It's almost 4,000 watts. I'll turn on the front one. I saw 6,000 watts there a second ago. All 
I don't want to turn on the back burner because my phone and this other stuff is there. Alrighty, so we can power a stove, at least the burners. Let me um, turn on convection bake, 300. All right, so that is pulling 72 amps. Uh, I wonder if I can do the top one as well. How do I do that? Upper one. We'll go 300 on that one too. Nothing really changed, so. All righty, so we can run a stove. Oh, look at that, 6,500 watts. A hundred and twenty-five amps, not bad. And again, this is on battery only. I turn the solar off. Now, obviously, if you run at this wattage, this is only going to last like an hour. Look at that, 148 amps. That's just it, turning on and off. All right, so this does work. It'll run for about an hour at that temperature. Actually, the burners will turn off once you get up the temperature. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is attempt the air conditioning. House is drawing 14 and a half amps or 760 watts. So we're gonna attempt the air conditioning now. And we go down to 68. And here we go. It worked. I saw a jump of 327 amps for a split second. The house lights did dim a little bit, but that was the first time ever running the air conditioning. <laughs> And if you really want to verify that, we could go outside. But I don't think we technically need to, do we? So there you go. You can run an air conditioning from the Rhino battery. And at least mine is drawing 4,000 watts, plus the house, so a little bit less. Actually, you could run the air conditioning more than you could run the stove. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, we'll go downstairs and check on the battery. All right, we're back downstairs and I'm pretty damn excited that we're running the air conditioning off the Rhino down here. Sorry for the inverter fan noise, but we're running, we're running stuff. We're running an air conditioning for the first time. So this is the first time I've ever been able to run, well, the stove or the air conditioning off this inverter. This is pretty damn exciting. So anyway, we are still drawing 78 amps or 4,000 watts. Again, we don't have the solar connected at this moment because we're just testing the battery only. Uh, if you wanna see the battery cells, they're all sitting at roughly 3.26 volts according to this app right here. So we are doing, we're doing damn good. I wish I could do the dryer at the same time, but I can't. Oh, this is exciting. All right, so I figured I would just kind of walk around to show you what is actually powered right now. So back here, what we're running is four LED lights and the furnace fan. If we go around back here, we've got an LED, actually that's fluorescent light, and then two LED lights right here and four LED lights back there and a couple of battery chargers, etc. Got an LED light right there, two more up here on top of the stairs and i don't think there's really anything else on up here except for some random lights so we got two here in the kitchen one right there in the family room another one right there in the family room a sleeping cat you know a modem router stuff like that and i think that's pretty much it there might be a couple random lights back there 
in the hallway, but not very many, you know, a couple alarm clocks, etc. Oh, we do have that little filter right there. He's on. All right, so we're gonna step back in time real quick and turn on the microwave. And we're drawing 104 amps. This is directly from the battery. Lunch for champions. All right, we're gonna do this little air compressor also while running everything, including the air conditioning. We'll see what that does. All right, so this is where we're at right now. 92%, we're drawing, you know, roughly 80 amps. So I'm gonna turn on the air compressor real quick. And here we go. Maybe we'll see the lights dim or not. Alrighty, that was pretty badass. So we're still running the entire house, including the air conditioner. And we just turned on that little air compressor and the lights didn't even flicker. All right, we are gonna go back upstairs and turn on one, at least one of the burners for the stove. All right, so we're drawing 81 amps. We're gonna turn on uh, this one back here. Now we're up to 112 amps. All right, uh, we can do another rear burner, I guess. 150, so 7,600 7, watts is what we're drawing right now. If it'll focus, there you go. 147 amps, not bad. Now, obviously we can't do this for very long, maybe an hour, but there you go. All right, so that was two burners. I could turn on the uh, convection, go 300 again. We're at 7,500 watts, 144 amps. All right, not bad, not bad at all. Again, we could only do that for about an hour. Actually, it could go longer because the burner won't stay on the entire time. So, there you go. Not too bad. Off. And we drop back down to 80. All right, we're going to go back down here and turn on the solar. Time now is only 11.16, so I don't have full sun on those panels right now anyway, but... We're going to go ahead and do that. So one and two, 198 volts for the solar. All right, looks like we're doing about 25 to 26 amps for solar. And there you go. We're drawing only 54 amps from the battery. I'm pretty damn excited with this right now. I'm not going to lie. Oh, if you want to check the uh, battery cables temperature, we could do that with that little thermometer gauge guy real quick. Sorry for the inverter noise. We're doing 72.5 freedom height and 22.6 degrees C. So everything is, everything is great. Battery is nice and cool. All right, so everything's good there. All right, let me get away from the inverter fan noise here real quick. All right, so we are doing absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. Probably gonna end the video here in just a minute because I'm sure it's gone on long enough because there's a lot of video here. Anyway, I was gonna do a quick little recap on my notes here. So, going back to the original question, can you run air conditioning, a stove, and a dryer, which I'm gonna go ahead and just say yes for all three, even though I couldn't run the dryer right now. So anyway, if we do three burners, was anywhere from four to 6,000 watts, all right? And that's 80 to 120 amps from the battery. And then once I shut those off and went to the convection oven, the lower oven, that is 3.8, 
kilowatt or 3,800 watts and or 70 amps. Oh, also keep in mind, I'm running everything else in the house. So it's actually a little bit less than that. If we add the upper, the smaller oven to the lower oven, it'll pull roughly 6.5 kilowatt or 6,500 watts or 125 amps. So we definitely can run the stove, obviously, if it's consistently pulling 6,500 watts, you're only gonna get maybe a little over an hour runtime. However, I keep forgetting that the burners do shut off or the heating elements do shut off, you know, and they'll turn on and off. So the runtime will be longer, all right? And then if we move on to the air conditioning. Now, when I was out there, I didn't see what ton it was. I had to look up the model number and it is a four ton, 14 sear air conditioning, whatever that means to people. I have no idea what it means. Whenever we did the startup for that first time, I slowed it down and it pulled 16,600 watts for a total of 327 amps. That was huge. Uh, that's okay though for this inverter and actually for this battery because you can do a surge on the battery for uh, 350 amps for six seconds, so we're still clear there. And for the inverter, it's okay because it can surge to 36,000 watts. So all completely good for all that stuff. And then whenever it finally calmed down and was running normally, uh, the load was 4.2 kilowatt or 4,200 watts. Uh, 70 to 80 amps, again, with the house and all that kind of stuff running. So you definitely can run the air conditioning. Again, I can't say how long because everybody's house is different, you know, efficiency wise. My house is not efficient. Our insulation sucks here. So my AC runs a lot longer than probably most people. Again, that goes back to the 1954 and they didn't really insulate the walls very well. All right, and then of course, while the AC was running, everything else was running. We ran the microwave for one minute. That was fine. And then I turned on the air compressor down here. You know, all of that is no problem at all. And then if we keep the air conditioning running, we can turn on two burners and that brought us up to 7,600 watts or 150 amps. Then if we turn the two burners off and just turn the lower convection oven back on, that'll bring us roughly to 7,500 watts or 145 amps. Again, I can't give you an actual runtime because you know, burners, they go on and off and air conditioning goes on and off. I don't know, I'm pretty damn excited because obviously like I've said probably a million times in the video, this is the first time I've ever been able to run anything substantial from, well, a battery and this inverter. I think the biggest things I've ever run is probably the air compressors. I have this one and then one out in my garage and I also have a welder out in my garage. It's a 240 volt one, but I don't know how much it actually draws. I kind of forget that I'm off grid most of the time and I just use everything like normal and everything just works. Hopefully I answered everybody's questions for the stove dryer and air conditioning. Yes, you can run all of those. I can't give you an actual run time because everybody's house and equipment is different. Also keep in mind if you have solar panels and all that kind of stuff, which I do, I have about 5,000 watts worth. If I were to use the air conditioning off grid, I don't think I could keep up with my 5,000 watts. Well, I'd probably be able to keep up, that's it. I wouldn't be able to recharge every day. I'd probably need another 5,000 watts at least to charge and run everything. If you did a lot of stuff at nighttime, you know, like after work, all your meal cooking and all that kind of stuff, and you wanted to use battery, you could do it for sure. Again, I can't say how long. Honestly, you would probably want to get at least one more Rhino battery. That would be a huge help. Obviously for us, most of our stuff is done during the daytime when the sun is out and we're recharging from solar. And also keep in mind, you can actually get this in a kit with this battery and the exact same inverter. And it comes with you know, wires and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for something exactly like what I'm using right here, minus the solar panels, Big Battery has it. You can get it in a whole kit. They also gave me a discount code, which I can pass off to you guys, which is Joe10. It's 10% off anything in their store. Uh, it's definitely not required, but it's always appreciated because I do get a small kickback from that, which helps me create, you know, these awesome videos. I guess they're really only awesome if you like the smash button. So if you thought this video was helpful, be sure to smash that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to check out my other videos on solar and battery projects, and I will see you on the next. Mine. Uh, we, um, um, uh, um, 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 uh, if we Google.